Hey everyone, this is Rob. Hey, I'm Michelle. And welcome to Boon Bape, your weekly podcast and everything you need to know about old school RuneScape. All right, so this week up on the docket, we of course are going to be starting off with any updates with us and our mm-hmm. accounts as always. And then there's actually not a lot to go on this Just week. Just a new quest and a new mini game. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> there isn't. There isn't. I mean, as far as like the notes there's yeah. not much notes as far as blogs there is literally just one which is the patch for this week so we'll be going over that of course in depth i think michelle has read through it and she's done the mini game yes so we'll, once though and <laughs> eh, once is enough we'll be able to talk about it a little bit you know get your experience and see whether you liked it or not yeah and then we'll be moving on into the questions for the week mm-hmm. our little q a our little baby q a so we'll have a few of those and we'll finish uh, with that that was it <laughs> yeah, it's really not a lot this week. yeah no but of course before we get into the update michelle how are you doing i'm doing very well exciting things happening this week big excitement tell me about it first off i feel like i leveled something and i don't remember okay. so that's kind of actually annoying i think i leveled up like my defense or something i don't know i was like 96 maybe that was last week yeah I don't know. I don't get levels often now. So whenever I do, it's like, well, that's kind of a big deal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but as you all know, I've been going for the Dark Claw. It's a 1 out of 25 drop from Skatizo, And it is such a pain getting the totem pieces in Karen to go to Skatizo. Yeah. I went and on my 50th kill, twice the drop rate, I did not get the claw, but I got the pet. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. I got cool. the pet. It was so random. I was like looking at the pile and just being like, oh, and then I saw the new collection log thing and I was like, what? And I, uh, it was during stream. I sent it and I was in a behemoth video now of me getting the pet. It was very exciting. I don't even think Robert's watched it yet. Nope. No, you have not. Yeah. I got it the other night and I'm so excited for it. I feel like this is my coolest pet now, but I think that I was kind of. You like him more than Chompy? Well, I think no. So I was going to say, I like that it glows. It's my first glowy pet, which is pretty cool. Yeah. I only have Kraken, Chompy, and Skatizo. But uh, I was going to say, like, I think I realized, because I was like, this is the coolest pet I have. But I used to think that the Chompy was the coolest pet. And yeah. I used to think the Kraken was the coolest pet. So I think it's always, it's just like a grass is always greener situation. Oh, uh, so you don't I mean, actually like any of your pets? No, you just no. Like them, but they're new. I love them initially. And then I just look at other pets and I'm like, well, I want that pet too. Like, yeah. I've just turned greedy. And then I don't get pets frequently. So by the time that I get a new pet, I'm like, oh, yes, this is the best pet in the game all of a sudden. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, whenever I got Skadiza, Skadiza is not even my favorite pet, but I, I just feel cool with it walking behind me. And it does the loud stomping, yeah, which it's I very like. Loud. I like it. Some people think it's annoying. I think it's cool. I do think it's annoying. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm so excited about it. I still don't have the Dark Claw, though. What is up with that? Yeah, you'll probably just never get it. Oh. I mean, someone in the chat uh, said that they got two pets before they got a claw. And I'm like, oh, my God. Also, I think that I don't think that this would be, like, that crazy. I think that if you get multiple pets, which I never have, I think that you should be able to have, like, little twins walking around behind you. And just have, like, a little gaggle of skatizos if you get a bunch. I don't think you should... Um... Oh, this is pointless. Yeah, no, I don't think you should like have them like be able to follow you, but I think you should like get them. Like, like you, know, you keep them in your house, like yeah, a bunch like, of them. Yeah, like keep one in your house. Yeah, because like, like if you die with it now, it costs like a mil, right, to get it back or whatever. Yeah. Or uh, was half a mil? I don't know. But um, it's a mil. Yeah, you should just like be able to put it in your house and just like have extras. That'd be kind of cute if you could have like five extras because you really love going to this boss. Yeah, exactly. I do think it's weird that it'll be like you have a funny feeling you would have been followed, and it's like. It's kind of pointless. Like, no, oh, yeah, it's just there's no point. Stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I feel like there should be some like physical thing for it. Yeah, but I don't know. I've I've never gotten a second pet or anything. It's just whenever I see people who are like, oh, I've gotten this many of blah blah blah. I'm like, that sucks actually. Yeah, <laughs> also, yeah. I don't know. I feel like there Seems should like a be <laughs> some kind of reward for it because, like, I mean, obviously the pet is normally the reward, but. Mm-hmm. I feel like maybe you should like re-roll the rare drop table for that boss or yeah, something like I mean, that. Yeah, I mean, well, like other stuff, if you get the rare drop again, you could just sell it, high out get something. Pet, you don't even get it. Yeah. It just says, you would have. <laughs> yeah. Feels like it should do something. But yeah, that was so exciting. I was so excited. The rest of the stream, I was just smiling, still riding that high a little bit. Yeah. 
And then I've also been doing a lot of chambers this week. I think I'm at like probably like 54 kill count. I've just been going with like. Damn, that's a lot. Yeah, I've been going with a lot of different people on the stream. Just like random groups of people, honestly. I've gone with a lot of people this week. But uh, on my 51st kill at chambers, I've done more chambers than Skatizo, which is so funny. Uh, yeah. I mean, I've definitely spent more time trying to get to Skatizo, though. Yeah. <laughs> than takes, anything else in the game. To get the totems. It does. But on my 51st Chambers kill, I got the Ancestral Rope Bottoms. Yeah. Which is worth like 80 something though. I yeah. can't even remember right now. There was five of us. I feel like my reaction was so lackluster because I was just like so shocked by it. I was just like, oh, what? <laughs> nice. <laughs> now looking at like my cash stacks now like 35 mil because of my split. I'm like, all right, that's pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it's it's nice. <laughs> it's very nice. Getting money's good. Tebow next probably. Yeah, pro more than likely. It's very cool. 51 kills and I've already gotten three uh, purples. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. I just need the T-bow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that'll happen soon. I tried to send that clip in too. I don't know Behemoth's rules, to be clear. But uh, apparently it's just mostly pets and T-bows that make that. I guess my code, I made it because I got it on my 10th kill. And that was just kind of insane. Yeah, because it's like... And with 5,000 points, that was less than a 1% chance. Yeah, it's... Yeah, it's just like because I mean, here he has like Probably so, gets many, so much videos yeah, a day. So many clips and stuff like that. Yeah, and also it's like yeah, no one. I mean, it's like unless it's like super rare, like your Kodai or something like that. Yeah, that was funny. No point to like put anything else on there. Big true. Yeah, I always feel like he's very nice about it. Whenever he says that, I always feel the most. It's my social anxiety for sure. I feel so embarrassed. I'm like, how dare I send him a video? Yeah. <laughs> how could I not have known? It wasn't even worth his time. <laughs> I know. He's very nice about that. He's just like, oh, thanks, but. <laughs> but yeah, uh, made it in one video, not a second. But that's okay. That's life. And it was so funny because shout out Annan for uh, <laughs> gifting me five subs before to make my RuneScape name TTV Boon Babe. Because today I was just doing seaweed spores and someone randomly was like, oh, ask, like, are you streaming right now? And I was like, no, nah, I'm going to be streaming like in a few hours, whatever. And uh, they were like, what do you do? And I was like, mostly chambers. I'm trying to get the dark claw. And then I said something about how I got Skodos the other day. And they're like, wait, I think I saw that. Were you on Behemoth? And I was like, yes, I was. So shout out Annan because I was literally while I was grabbing my helmet and stuff to go underwater i was like should i change my name is it cringe that it's the the twitch link and right after someone asked me about the stream and i was like okay no maybe this is good i thought that was nice <laughs> that's so funny and that was funny because i was like i don't know i just thought it was weird that uh they actually noticed me in the video <laughs> yeah i mean i guess it is a sad brag i'm two times the drop rate and i haven't gotten the dark claw seems like everyone most people Maybe like one person that I've spoken to has not gotten the claw within the drop rate. Yeah. Well, uh, what's it called? Did he did he say your name this time? Because he's never mm -hmm. said it before. Yeah, I actually put my name. He said it once. I think I've been in like three clips. Yeah. Whenever I got the code, I forgot to say the name of our stream. <laughs> this time I said the name. Yeah. I don't think he said it, but he put it on the screen, probably because everyone doesn't know how to pronounce Boon Bape. And they're like, Boon Yeah. He's, <laughs> yeah, he's not from here, so he would definitely say it like that. Australian, yeah? Yeah. I would love that though. <laughs> I don't know why all Australians say Bunabape. It's the best. Like we even by, have a little command default. on stream now for Bunabape. It's like Boon Babe with Italy hands. Yeah. <laughs> like sometimes like people from the United States will say it, but like without fail, like people from New Zealand or anything like that will always default to saying it like that. Bunabape is the best. Like we should probably just rename the podcast and the stream. That's actually been the whole the name the whole time. You're yeah. Just, I just never told you. You just never corrected me in the 70 episodes. Yeah. <laughs> Sick. Cool, 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 cool. But yeah, I've been having like the most fun raiding. It's so cool. If anyone wants to join me, hit me up. I have a little thing that you're going to have to put on stream though that Bastille actually put me on, which is a good idea for people to copy and paste the message saying that they will split because she's been scammed. Yeah. <laughs> But it was funny because it's so awkward having to ask people they don't know to do that. Somebody yesterday, I was like, oh, if you could copy and paste that. And all they typed was like, okay, I split. And I was like, all right. I don't know who it was. I think it was Wraith was like, seems solid. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah. like, yep, that's, that's legally binding right there. Legally bl blinding. <laughs> legally blinding. Yes, exactly. But uh, what else have I been doing? Chambers, Slayer. I already have two totem pieces. 
which is so cool. I got two totem pieces and like one Slayer task, which is rare. Yeah, that's pretty good. So now I just need the top and then I can go to Skatizo for my 51st kill. And then get another pet. Then I'll actually be annoyed that there's no physical thing when you get a second pet. Yeah. We need something. Just have a bunch of like little baby Skotos running around my POH. That'd yeah, be cute. That'd be, I don't know. I feel like that'd be cool to like have copies because yeah. it's like it doesn't matter. And then they matter. wouldn't be, they wouldn't be like a gaggle of them following you, which I would like. But some people might complain about that. Yeah. Like maybe you could have like a maximum amount of extras in your house, like two or five or something like that. But because what's or or the reroll like you said they might yeah. be more gonna do that like it sucks getting a second pet seems like yeah like, like maybe it'll say like oh you would have got a pet but instead you got a t-bow <laughs> i don't know like, an whatever. apple <laughs> yeah it doesn't have to be crazy just another chance at like a, a rare yeah i mean i guess it's well i was gonna say it's nice for people who lost their pet a yeah, second pet and i was like wait it would still work with yeah. our idea no oh, yeah yeah okay that's weird Anyway, please add that change, Jack X. Thanks. Yeah, that'd be cool. Because, <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't even be like a guaranteed rare. It would just be like another chance at rolling on the rare table. Exactly. Of like whatever boss you're doing. That seems like a fair trade. And then I could get a Dark Claw, hopefully. Maybe someday in my life. Yeah, that wouldn't happen. But yeah, Watch maybe. me get the Jar of Darkness before I get a Dark Claw. Probably. Ugh, that's like a 1 out of 2,500. Yeah, that's like one of the rare items of the game. Yeah, no, I feel like that would happen, though. Just because... Just because of the uh, the totems is so like hard that. to get to. It's yeah. so annoying. I also realized looking at the drop rates that I am like five over getting a totem piece drop. Oh, really? It drops like singular totem pieces. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's like one out of 45. And I was like, I'm getting scammed on that one too. Because <laughs> that would help me get back faster. Yeah, it's not the same though. I feel like really low drop rates like that just in general are just like super unreliable. Robert's such a hater. He doesn't want to believe them two times the drop rate. And yeah. I am. It's, I don't know. It just doesn't. I don't it's know. the same. It's just, I feel I've like. I've spent more time grinding to get totem pieces than I've spent any boss ever. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, that's depressing. I mean, you have, yeah, never mind. I mean, if you th every task that I do, I try to do in Corinth specifically for that. I know. I was going to say you <laughs> haven't spent like a ton of time at any bosses, but you, you've Cracked spent like. Cracked a thousand. No, nah, but Kraken's really fast. I feel like you spent more time at Volcano. No, I haven't. I've definitely spent more time doing Slayer. Oh, than Kraken? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Zolcano, I'm like 800 something. Yeah, which also, I've never gotten the seed from Zolcano, which is one out of 200. No, it's, it's not. very specific. It's one out of 200 with a group of four players. Yeah, I think. but the past like 200 ish kills, I've been playing with groups of four. I've been doing groups of four a lot now. People yeah. stream. Yeah. Uh, I also love Zolcano though. So if anyone wants to go there, hit me up. <laughs> hit me up for any gaming, basically, is what I'm saying. Yeah. And if you found out a way to drop the Dark Claw and I could pick it up, you know what? Hit me up. <laughs> wow. Exploiter confirmed. <laughs> Just kidding. Don't do that. But yeah, it's been it's been very fun. I've been enjoying myself. Twitch.tv slash boonvape if you want to come hang out with me. And I've been getting so much raids. So thank you everyone who's been raiding me if any of you listen to the podcast. Shout out. There's like been so much people I can't even shout out everyone individually. Yeah. But it's been sick. And I think... That's all I've been doing. I've also been having like a couple eight hour streams this week, which is cool. I did two in a row and it makes me feel good because then I don't feel guilty for not doing Instacarts because I'm like, well, I basically worked a full shift. Yeah. Logically, this makes me feel good. Oh, and also, I don't know if we said it last week, but we're doing another sponsorship, not raid. A new one. I don't think we started it last week. I don't think so either. Yeah. So this is with Factor. And Factor is pre-prepared meals that can get sent straight to you. And you just have to heat it up. So if you use our link, which you could just do like exclamation point Factor. We have it in our panels on Twitch. Then you can get like, oh, I think it's $120 off after a few, like over the course of a few orders. And they have like vegan, vegetarian, keto, low calorie, omnivore, carmi carnivore, 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 that's how you can tell I'm not one. They have all the little dietary options and you would be helping us out significantly. Everyone who orders, we get $125. It's nutty. Help out your girl. Get some good food. I'm excited to have the vegan one. We're getting it <laughs> delivered next week. <laughs> yeah, we're going to try that. And hopefully it's good because yeah. last time they don't have any vegan options yeah last time when we did the hello fresh one well we did like the hello fresh one i definitely do it with them again but 
they didn't have vegan options. So we had to replace all the cheese with our own cheese and yeah. just give the dairy to like my sister. <laughs> yeah. So it wouldn't go to waste. But yeah, I think that's it for me. How have you been, Roberino? Uh, I've been pretty good. Um, I played like luckily I actually was able to play more this week than like previous weeks, all, all the previous weeks combined, essentially. But um yeah, so I ended up doing quite a bit more Firewatch because my main that I usually do Rune Dragons on, I actually moved over to do Firewatch just because it's like even more AFK. And right oh, now yeah. I'm just like trying to it's like either do that or just like not play the account essentially. But um, <laughs> so I moved them both over to do Firewatch Sentinels and it's been pretty good. I haven't still haven't got anything on my on my main in a while like any rares yeah from either rune dragons or from uh firewatch sentinel so it's kind of lame i think i've killed like quite a few hundred on my main at this point but yikes um i mean i guess good news is i did get um blood shards on my on my alt account Woo! which is kind of crazy because i checked and it's like around eight or nine hundred kc which i think the drop rate is 1200 yeah 11 1200 yeah that. yeah right around there and so it was crazy because i got the first drop around i think like 700 and then i got another blood shard drop around 900 so i'm actually like b way below drop right now so cool and it's also crazy because i remember when i first started this alt account the blood shards were only around like 5.6 mil each and now they're 9.5 mil or something like that so <laughs> so significant oh my yeah. god so before the price went down i went over and just sold them i was thinking about keeping them but i was like i don't really want to see if the price does go down so yeah i just went and sold them so that was a pretty easy 20 mil nice yeah it's, it's nice monies. because yeah I, I definitely needed some money <laughs> are you trying to save it for something um like kind of like always, but also just like for bonds and stuff like that, for giveaways and just yeah. in, in general. And like also I, I like the, the gear for, for Rune Dragons is expensive. So it's always nice to be able to like upgrade that or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, because the Hosta actually ended up selling the shield that you gave me f for the Hosta. So like I. What like, shield did I give you? You gave me the Dragonfire Ward like a long time ago. Oh, I don't even remember. Yeah, so I I like owe you like money for that, so now I could pay hey. you back for that. <laughs> I didn't even realize you yeah. could just not said anything. <laughs> no, yeah, so now I could pay you back for that, and still have money for like bonds and stuff like that. So nice, okay. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. But besides that, honestly, not too much else has been going on in like my gaming life. So just a little bit of RuneScape here and there, but it's nice because it was more than last time. I didn't play nearly as much as I wanted to. You want to be a full gamer. Yeah, just because, like, yeah, the weekend was busy, and that's mainly the time I have to play, so unfortunately. Yeah, we both were busy this weekend. I only got to play, like, I don't know, like, four hours, I think, which is definitely not the six or eight that I wanted, but. Six or eight per day. Yeah, but it's all good. Um, besides that, though, that's pretty much it, so I guess we can move into the um, the patch notes for this week. Yes. So the patch notes are for the Giants Foundry. So this is the new smithing minigame that has been teased for quite a few weeks. And we <laughs> essentially already know how it's uh, like going to work out and how it's going to go. It's nice that they actually did change the values for this. So it's a much more competitive minigame yeah. as far as XP rates than before. But and, we are still uh, going to go over it all again just because actually playing it is different from reading it. Yeah, of course. So, so. try it before you listen. So then it'll like... You understand more because I was getting so confused. Yeah. To be fair, I was like also playing Animal Crossing at the same time. But hey. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so Michelle did play. So she knows the lowdown for this. Yes. All right. So starting out with the Sleeping Giants quest. Ah, giants. We all know them. Enormous humanoids hanging about Gilnor, simply minding their own business until some adventurer or another comes along to beat them up. And by beat them up, they mean. They mean literally kill put them, them to death. <laughs> But how much do we really know about these giants? What do they think about? Where do they come from? Would they enjoy making massive swords in some kind of Grangatang workshop? Grangatang! <laughs> oh Stop. my god. Stop. Oh Stop. My god. I didn't know how to pronounce this. Oh my god. I hate you. I hate you. Guys, it is Stop. a gargantuan workshop. <laughs> I don't want to read the rest of the notes. A Grangatang. 
Great. I was thinking of a monkey. What's the monkey called? Orangutan. <laughs> Wait. Orangutan. <laughs> I feel so embarrassed right now. Usually I <laughs> laugh at my stuff I say, but your face made That's this so embarrassing. How do you say it again? Gar- gargantuan. Why is it spelled like that? Because it's, it's not gorangutan. Gorangutan. What's the monkey? It's an orangutan. Okay. Orangutan. That's what I was thinking of. Gorang. Gorangutan. <laughs> Say it again. It's, it's gargantuan. <laughs> gargantuan. 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 <laughs> and some kind of gargantuan workshop. Oh my god, in my head I was like, Oh my god. Gargantuan workshop. Anyway, all these questions and more will be answered in Sleeping Giants, a new Novus quest. You'll help Kovac, a friendly giant who's discovered an ancient forge built to his giant-sized proportions. To start, head to the giant plateau east of Alcreed, near Sithridel... 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 Near Garangatang <laughs> Abbey. Abbey. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I didn't even... For some reason, I thought this was going to be in Corinne. I don't know why I was convinced. No, I think you also not. thought it was going to be in Corinne. Um, I think we, we might thought have it was going to be by the giant's den. Yeah, that's why. yeah, the giant's den. Yeah. I didn't know there was a giant plateau right here. That's so funny. I actually didn't really have any idea where it was going to be. The quest started in Alcarid, and I was like, "Weird, how's it going to end up in Corinne?" <laughs> yeah, all the quests nowadays start in Corinne. It's a really it's the place to be. It's a really hot area. So, slight spoilers, quest requirements, you need 15 smithing, and the rewards are access to Giant's Foundry, 6,000 smithing XP, and one quest point. Complete Sleeping Giants will also give you the know-how you need to start smithing in the Giant's Foundry. Yeah, so there you go. All right, so onto the actual Giant's Foundry. It is a non-instance, non-combat, safe area accessible to members. Here, you'll work on Kovac's commissions, picking out the perfect sword design, choosing an appropriate level metal to work with, and carefully smithing the blade with a variety of tools. Each commission will come with two customer requests. For example, they might want a sword that's narrow and spiked. You'll need to pick a mold from Kovac's extensive mold library that matches that description. The closer the match, the higher quality your sword will be, so choose wisely. Next, you'll need to choose a metal to work with and place in the crucible, the big stone bucket chained over the river of lava, naturally. It'll accept bronze, iron, steel, mithril, adamant, or rune bars, or any metal item you want to recycle. We're eco-friendly here. A giant sword requires 28 bars worth of metal, which is conveniently the exact same amount the crucible can hold. It's like we did it on purpose. The higher the tier of metal you choose, the longer the sword will take to shape, and the more precise the temperature range will have to be. Kovac also believes that swords made of an alloy, a mixture of two more metals, will be better. Something to bear in mind. Now it's time to cool off as we begin to work the blade. Uh, before we get into that, I do want to say the mold setup is hilarious because your swords just look insane. The yeah. combination of them, it's just like a wavy sword and then like curved at the end. It's just, look, it looks crazy. Okay. So refinement. The refinement process allows you to shape the raw preform you just created into a blade fit for a mighty giant. You have a variety of tools at your disposal. Trip hammer, requiring a hot, hot, hot sword. This tool is used to hammer out the imperfections on the blade. Grindstone, swords must be at medium temperature to allow this tool to grind out the edge of the sword and make it smooth. Polishing wheel, get that sword to a cool temperature to use this tool, which cleans up the blade and gives it a lovely shiny finish. Lava pool, dip your sword into lava and heat it up, ensuring it's hot enough to use particular tools. And waterfall, use the crashing waves of the waterfall to cool your sword down in order to use certain tools. Use the right tool at the right time and you'll increase the sword's completion to 100%. You can track which tool to use at the heat range using the in-game HUD. So, I was so confused looking at this thing originally. Yeah. Because it's like three little things that are green, yellow, and red, and then three underneath that are red, yellow, and green. Yeah, so for to like try and describe it a little bit better, it's yeah, that was bad. three large bars with the bottom two being segmented into thirds and the top one just being a full Yeah, I didn't even mention the top bar because I don't know what the top bar does, to be honest. Okay. (laughs) But uh, basically, like, 
one column is your temperature and the other column is like how close to completion you are and you just have to like have the arrows like if the arrow's in red then you need to have like hotter if the arrow yeah on on bottom if the arrow's in yellow on the bottom you need to have it kind of warm and just like that it confused me at first because i didn't read any of this i just kind of went for it and like i said i was also playing animal crossing so i didn't know what was going on yeah so just based on this picture it seems like you if for instance, in this example, you want to hammer the sword, which is a red bar with a hammer in it. So that means it needs to be a very hot sword. Mm -hmm. And then that'll allow you to hammer it to the highest quality. Yes. And then the second one is like a grind wheel, which is a yellow bar. So you're going to need to cool down the sword in order to use the grind wheel. And the last one looks like a polishing wheel and it's a green bar. So you're going to need to cool it down much more. In order to actually efficiently use the gr uh, the grind wheel or the uh, polishing wheel, rather, you got that much faster than I did. All right, using tools changes the temperature of the preform, which also naturally cool over time. Using the incorrect tool or using the right tool outside the correct temperature range will result in a lower quality sword. I did that a lot, and he kept stopping me, and he's like, "Stop!" And I was like, "What am I doing wrong?" And he tells you if it's too hot or too cold. Yeah. <laughs> also, I think the bar at the very top is like how. Good well out of a hundred you did essentially i don't think that it can go up i think okay based on what i saw there's like a blue progress bar at the top yeah mine was only like a sixth of the way to the right like going through filling it up and it went it kept going back like left and there was some red so i think that that's saying that's the highest quality your sword can be because you're using cheap materials okay and then it goes lower like if you keep messing up like i did okay that's my impression i done it once. <laughs> so going over it again, just in their example rather than Robert's, this is an example of their refinement process. One, decrease the initial temperature using the waterfall until the preform is cool enough to try the trip hammer. Two, cool the preform again to just pull the yellow temperatures range, then work it with the grindstone. Three, repeat steps one and two until the sword is almost complete. Four, cool the preform to the green temperature zone, then use the polishing wheel to finish the job. Five, hand the finished sword to Kovac to complete the commission. And you do have to do like a lot of going back from the waterfall. And yeah, you're going to have to repeatedly over. heat up and cool down the sword. Yeah. If you manage to reach 100% completion without ruining the sword, you can hand it into Kovac, who will reward you some juicy XP and some foundry reputation. The higher quality, the more rewards you'll get. And as far as experience goes, they do have a chart here showing how much you can expect. It says they've messed with the XP rates quite a bit, so here's a refresher. The table below is based on players who make between 10 and 20 swords an hour using 28 bars per sword. Wonder why they, I don't I wonder why they specify 28 bars. Can you, you can't use less than 28 bars. I don't know. It's very specific, <clears throat> but yeah, that's how much you use. Oh, also you need to wear ice gloves. I don't know if you need to buy it. Yeah, I probably, couldn't figure out how to use it until I picked up ice gloves. You could probably do it with a, with a bucket of water, right? Just like, I, I didn't furnace. try that. Yeah, probably though. Yeah. But um, as far as the XP rates go, so the alloy tier is going from lowest all the way up to highest. And as far as XP rates from the lowest being 48,000, going up to 85,000, 135,000, 195, and finally the highest being 276,000 experience wow. per hour. And all of this is just an estimate and also doesn't tell you the exact um metal that is required for this because it just simply says alloy tier mm -hmm. so it's gonna because there's multiple um metals in each alloy tier so you're gonna have to mess around with that and see which works best for you yeah um in their test it seems that the low and the medium which is eighty five thousand xp and 135,000 xp are actually profitable nice. as far as if you are trying to do this and make money or just spend as little as possible then that's probably going to be where you're going to want to sit i will be doing medium <laughs> yeah good and xp and not wasting money if you want to absolutely obliterate your bank probably use the highest because it takes 6.6 .6 gp per xp which is oh my god very very high that's like herb like herbalism like herb lore type like money per, per yeah. experience but um yeah that's that's very very high but right below that for example is 0.5 gp per experience instead of 6.6 .6, so significant yeah definitely quite a big deal um they've also crunched the numbers for other sk skilling methods so if you want to compare it directly you don't have to just know off the top you can actually check it here 
and saying that for goldsmithing with no gauntlets, it's 150k per hour. Goldsmithing with gauntlets is 375k, so you're still at a around 100k experience per hour loss by doing the Giant's Foundry, which is a lot better than what it was. Um, steel at the Blast Furnace is 90,000 per hour, but that is extremely profitable. For example, the profitable parts of Giant's Foundry will get you about 0.3 GP per XP, while steel bars at the Blast Furnace with a coal bag will get you 12.3. So literally... It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, much, much better. Um, but yeah, it is pretty low experience. It's actually c comparable um, yeah. experience, but it just makes so much more money. But you also do have to have the coal bag. So. And it is, I guess, a little bit more boring. No, definitely. Yeah, so it's definitely up to you on that one. And then the final three are creating mithril, adamant, and rune items with the XP rates going from 190,000 on the low end for mithril items all the way up to 310,000 for rune items. And of course, that's just, um, it says five bar mithril items. So they're talking about mithril plate bodies and then three bar rune items. And I don't know what they're referencing in that one because obviously I you can't even, do you can't do plate bodies but i didn't realize you can get so much xp doing rune items that's funny uh yeah it, it's actually like one of I the mean, better, i guess i can't do them huh it's one of the, like the like classic ways to do it but yeah you need like 90 in order to even like start doing it that so. sucks yeah it's funny because i was thinking like oh for, for a second i was like oh why don't they say five bar rune items like plate you have bodies. To be 99 because you have to be 99 <laughs> yeah man. i was thinking the same thing smithing needs a rework for sure oh yes but um, yeah, so that's it as far as XP rates go. It pretty much just seems like this is a pretty interesting or at least different uh, new way to get experience that yeah. is not too low while um, yeah, also getting maybe some money if that's something you're interested in as well. And there are some cool rewards that we're going to go over. Yeah, but like I think we already knew going into this, if you're looking for just money or just experience, Blast Furnace is going to be better in every regard it's like every mini game same with guardians of the rift we're like lavas are technically better but do you want to be doing that yeah. <laughs> yeah so it's up to you on what you prefer like i said i think I'll, I'll probably try it out but just based on the numbers i i don't mind blast furnace either so i'll probably just like stay live, with that yeah live there whenever i go to 99 so. yeah maybe i'll do both we'll see yeah all right so moving on to the rewards the first is the smith's uniform Kovac has acquired some ancient dwarven wear somehow, and since it's a bit small for him, he'll let you purchase it in the reward shop. I love that there's no backstory for that. He just found clothes in other ours. Yep. The Smith's uniform consists of gloves, boots, a top, and a pair of swinky bottoms. It also offers two suitably smithy bonuses. Each piece of the outfit will give you 20% chance to reduce your anvil smithing speed by one tick, which adds up to 100% chance in wearing the full outfit. This evens out to 15 to 20% speed buff while smithing, while anvil smithing. And finally, each outfit piece equipped also gives a 20% chance for extra completion while completing your commissions inside of the foundry, which again rises to 100% chance when wearing the full set. It's kind of funny. I feel, I find that the first effect is interesting because it increases your, your speed. smithing at an anvil. Do you smith at an anvil in the minigame? Hmm. No, I think they just mean in general. Yeah, that's what because I thought. Because I think that they said they were going to originally make the outfit just benefits here, and people were like, "Yeah, well, no, give it, give us a benefit we could use elsewhere." Yeah. <laughs> I think that's cool because it actually kind of inadvertently buffs blast furnace mm -hmm. because you're probably going to blast a bunch of oh, like mithril yeah. or adamant, and then you can actually use this outfit to. Um, go through them twenty percent faster. So well, you do have to be smithing it uh, like an anvil. No, yeah, I know. Oh, okay, gotcha. No, I'm just saying, like, once you blast them, you'll probably go to Varrock, and then you'll Oh, smith them I thought there. you meant at the Blast Furnace. I was like, that's not... <laughs> I mean, you could. They have they have Oh, they there. do, just nobody does it. Yeah. They also say that you could combine the Smith's Glove with the Ice Gloves, giving you the benefits of both, which is actually very cool. Yeah, that's very, very handy. Should you wish to return to your usual icy business, you can separate them again at your leisure. Yeah, imagine, like, wearing this. I don't know why you would need to wear it you'd probably just wouldn't but imagine wearing this and your ice gauntlets and your gold gauntlets at blast furnace 
<laughs> just let us combine all of the gauntlets into one pair. Yeah, just the infinity, <laughs> like literally the infinity gauntlet. Can we somehow also get the uh, cooking ones in there too? Just for oh, fun. Yeah, that'd be nice. Actually, just all of them. Yeah. Next up is ore packs. Ore packs are a great way to purchase lots of coal in one go, making it easier for you to prepare for your next trip to the Giant's Foundry. You'll have a small chance to obtain other ores from these packs too, but the focus is mainly going to be coal. As far as molds, we thought it'd be interesting if you could buy tools to help you improve your swordsmithing process within the foundry. These extra molds will help you with all kinds of commissions and give you a leg up on quality before you even start smithing. The better the mold, the higher the smithing level you'll need to train and gain all in one location. The 8 Cannonball Mold. With Leagues 3, you got an 8 sided cannon, so it's only fitting that you now get an 8 Cannonball Mold. This mold lets you use two steel bars to smith 8 cannonballs at once, doubling your production speed. This, Significant. Yeah, this is cool for Iron Man. This is going to be huge on our group if we ever play it again. Yeah, I wonder <laughs> if this will... I don't think so, but I wonder if this will reduce the price of cannonballs because more bots can make them twice as fast now. Hey, I'll take that for my main. Uh, Cheaper yeah. cannonballs. <laughs> yeah, I haven't used a cannon in a long time, but oh, yeah, that, that'll time. be nice. Smithing Catalyst. Using this unstackable item when creating bars of the furnace will not only have the amount of coal required, but will also double the XP given. However, the catalyst will be consumed when the bar's made, so you need plenty of them to go around. They're pretty cheap, though. I think it was like 15. Yeah. And the outfits are like 3,000. You can also use catalyst at the blast furnace, where they'll give you double XP for any bar produced using coal. However, it won't cut the coal cost down. As an added extra, you'll also be allowed to use catalyst at the blast furnace bank, so you can use lots of them in one run. Yeah. That's actually really crazy, the catalyst thing, because, I mean, if you're able to get enough, and to use it while doing Double XP. steel bars, like they said, you'd be making really good money per hour and also 180k experience per hour, Jeez. which is like kind of a lot. So a bit. Yeah, that, that that's pretty cool that they allowed you to use it yeah. there as well. Next up is Kovac's Grog, a brew made by Kovac himself. This supposedly tasty grog will give you a temporary smithing boost of plus four. Just don't tell health and safety you're drinking on the job. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Wow, that's funny. Nice. Moving on to the Colossal Blade. This mighty sword is strikingly similar to the one you've held Kovac make, and it requires 60 attack to wield. Alongside this, we're giving it a special effect that fits the theme of the blade. Depending on the size of the enemy you're fighting, it will now increase your max hit according to the size of the NPC. So this is equal to max hit plus two times NPC size. The NPC size will be capped at 5, so NPCs will take up a 5x5 five five area and above, meaning that you'll be dealing the most damage against bigger enemies. We feel like this weapon now fits a good niche comparatively to the Dragon Semi and could prove more useful in certain situations, whilst also looking great to boot. Remember, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Yeah, I wonder what enemies you'd use this on. Probably, I would just use it on Giants. Yeah, I mean, but Giants are only... Uh, like two two? By, they're two by two, so it'd, it'd be four extra damage. I'm sure there'll be some very hyper specific ones people will come up with. Yeah, I don't I'm even, waiting on that. I don't know what mobs that would take up a five by five area. I think dragons are dragons five or four. I'm not sure, but I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know if I would even use it there because dragons are so weak to stab. use it on Ulm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> bring it, bring it for bloat. I mean, maybe if you're iron, you don't have any good weapons. No, I mean, I guess so. Do. I'm sure somewhere it'll be. Like niche, mm -hmm. so. All right, they are also doing a weapon design competition. Since we are delving into the world of giant weaponry with today's update, we want to see what would fit a giant best. We'd like for you to design any type of weapon that you could see Kovac or any other giant wielding as they take on the world. You only need the visual design of the weapon to qualify for entry, but you are more than welcome to include stats or lore surrounding your designs. So this competition is going to begin at, at what like. 12.01 a.m. Midnight, yeah. Yeah, at midnight BST on June 8th. So it's already begun. And it closes at 11.59, basically midnight BST on June 20th. The four finalists will be chosen by the old school team and will feature in a poll in July. Submissions. Complete the weapon design competition form and the following information. So you have to include, like, your design in JPEG, PNG, GIF, or MP4. You need to include your RuneScape username and your country of residence. The winner will receive 12 months of membership, with the other three finalists receiving three months of membership each. Enter your submission using this page, which we'll include on our YouTube video of this, yeah. for the full terms and conditions, and head over to the forum thread to read more about it. They look forward to seeing all of your designs. Yes, it's kind of funny, because I 
while I think the artist would more than likely be happy enough with the result, I think it's funny that they're like low key, like commissioning people to like make them weapon designs and is paying them with like 60 bucks worth of membership oh when you put it like that it's kind of dark <laughs> yeah because i mean that's i mean they're probably oh. gonna use these designs like eventually it, or, yeah, or at least the, like, cool. the, the winning one but how much would they pay a graphic designer to make the same thing yeah probably way more right so oh, i think wow. that's kind of funny interesting okay yeah. So do it at your own discretion. <laughs> we already saw one on Reddit. Robert was scrolling before we started recording. And, you know, you could have like the ham. What's it called? The ham joint. Yeah. You have that. Somebody said to have the rest of the ham. And it was just a giant carrying around this pig with like it's uh it's thigh missing, basically. And yeah. I thought that was so funny. It's, it's just carrying a little pig with a thigh missing. Yeah, it's just literally an entire pig. Yeah. And they called it the ham. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cute. But yeah, I'm sure we're going to be seeing a lot of cool stuff like coming up soon. Yeah, I feel like I was thinking like if I was going to choose a weapon that would actually make sense, it would be like a dwarven hammer because you could like say like, oh, they either found it in like a dwarven like crypt or something or they ended up defeating like a dwarf or something like that. Mm -hmm. And they had like a really like ornate hammer that was like really well made or something like that. Yeah, I feel like that'd be cool. I don't even know what I'd want. I like funny stuff like the ham. <laughs> the ham. Just the ham. All right. There are some tiny little baby changes that are not related to Giant Foundry. So they say, calling all iOS players. You will no longer be able to log in on the iOS beta client from June 15th. As per this news post, we'll need to close the iOS beta client preparation for our full client launch. Some other changes this week. Pressing space to smith or craft for the last item again will no longer also add a space to the chat. Interesting that they did that. And reduce the time required to make Guardians in the Guardians of the Rift. That's good. They can yeah, take a while. Yeah, thank goodness. Yeah, that took forever. In addition, multiple Guardians can now be made from the same pile. That's actually That's crazy. good. It's unheard of. We complain about that a lot. The person who, like, two of us are trying to do it at the same time. You don't yeah. get credit for it. This next one is actually crazy because I've noticed this the couple times I tried to go there. Oh, Mirdish Laboratories have been added to the world map. This is probably why I never knew where they were. It wasn't even on the world map. No, yeah. That makes sense. I've never been there. I mean, maybe I've been there. I don't know. Group storage will now be locked during the 30-minute timer before the game reboots. That's kind of annoying. Well, I wonder. <laughs> it's probably because like people would just like lose items or something like that. Oh, okay. The Drainer multi-way combat area now covers the path and the teleport arrival point. Play your own house lock settings will now be remembered across logins. Players may now use spare farmer outfit pieces on... How do you say Grisseler? Oh, I call him Grolicker. Grolicker for an 80%... Or Grickler. Grickler for an 80% refund in line with other reward shops. An animation is now played every time you use your Abyssal Lantern and it gives you a benefit, with the exception of the Redwood Rune Pouch degrading prevention effect. The in-game GIM Boss Bash info has been corrected to reflect that Volcano gives three tickets rather than two, and they fixed typos in the Guardians of the Rift chat. Nice. They also made a couple small changes to the group iron notifications. So the wording of the level broadcast has been changed to play your name has reached skill name level and then the level. I wonder what it was before because this seems obvious. Yeah, this seems like <laughs> there, there would be almost no other way to do it. Yeah, right? It must have been weird. Yeah. Enabling the post-99 level XP broadcast sets the amount to 1 million by default. They should do that on regulars. I want you guys to know every time they get farther and farther away. From 13 mil farming without a pet. Yeah, I mean, you tell me like every day, so I feel like Still, that's enough. I want everyone to know. PKing a player as a GIM now also tracks how much the other player lost. And the description for the PK broadcast value setting now correctly refers to coins. Then they just rotated the PvP worlds, which is like, okay. Transport yourself back to the first time you visit Lumbridge with a new special collection for the RuneScape merch. Go back and meet the Lumberj Guide, Goblin, and Noob. Just looks like a little bot. Bring back those early memories of chopping wood with those bronze and rune axe key rings. Ah, nostalgia. So it's just cute little pins of like goblins and... Yo, where are you getting a rune axe as a noob? That's what I'm saying, right? What the heck? Speaking of which, with this mini teleport icon pin set, they're really cute. They're just like the little H and L and F. Yeah, they're, they're like they're the... They're really the, cute. Actually, I was going to say that the tablets, but they're not. They're just the little teleport signs in yeah. your spellbook. And they're like mini. They're like very tiny. I like it a lot. They're pretty cute. You can travel back to other iconic game locations as Angel Escapes continues this new series based on her favorite places in Guildnor. Where will she go next? 
Last but by no means least, don't forget to snag your copy of the RuneScape Kingdom, Shadow of Elvark. Elvark? Yeah. There's only 48 hours left, so like 24 for you guys, like less than 24 for you guys. Yeah. To get the game uh, backed and to get your Kickstarter exclusive goodies. You can yeah. read all about it in the news post. Yeah, apparently also um, there's a hands-on demo review by Yogscast, which is uh, some pretty popular uh, English YouTubers. And I used to watch them back in the day. They're pretty cool. So oh, I, nice. okay. I think they'll probably do a good job about uh, reviewing it. Awesome. But um, yeah, also if you don't like have the money or just don't really want to get into it until it's like properly reviewed or something like that when it releases, then you can still buy the board game. Mm-hmm. You just won't get any of the extras when it comes out next year. Yeah, like I wanted to pre-order it, but I don't think we actually have the money for it right now. So we might have to wait. Yeah, and also <laughs> it's, it's not like it's going anywhere unless like like we said, you really want the pre-order bonuses or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, because it, while it is like a decently good deal, it's not like a huge percent off or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, make sure to keep that in mind if you are planning on getting it. Okay. All right. That's it for the updates. That is all. But we do have a few questions from people to ask. So we're going to start out with one question from Matt. He actually asked a general question this week. Why did you decide to start this podcast and did you consider starting another podcast instead of a different theme or are you considering starting another one in the future? All right. So why did we start to guess all of these? Well, the last one, maybe not. Why did we decide to start it? We both Um, got laid off in 2020 and RuneScape was like our thing after we got laid off. Yeah. We were obsessively playing it. So yeah, we would play it a lot and the thing was like we, we used to go on walks every day and I was gonna so say like that. we would go on walks outside and touch grass, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and so we would walk for like, you know, like 15 20 minutes and the whole time we'd be like talking about our uh, like OSRS. Yeah, it was great. We just be talking about what we're doing, what we want to do, just getting hyped up for it and stuff. And then I'm actually already in a podcast called Spooky Shit. If anyone wants to check that out, just go on stream and just type like actually yeah, spooky. Yeah, talk about uh, ghosts and true crime. Yeah, but uh, I'm already in it, so we'd already like thought about podcasts, and then it kind of just happened naturally. We're like, let's just start one. And everyone already, I mean, if you didn't know, we've said this a few times. Our name just comes from we'd always be like, oh, Runescape, Boon Vape. And just like rhyming it randomly. Yeah, I still it's do so that. funny because it Boon Babe now I don't even associate it with how I used to say it. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm just like, oh yeah, the the podcast. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, we just would go on walks and we're like, why not just talk to everyone about it? Yeah, and at the time, <laughs> I mean, there's a lot more options now, but at the time there wasn't, at least not to my knowledge, a lot of RuneScape podcasts. Yeah, like, I think I there's think, a decent amount now. I think there was like less than a handful. Now there's at least like a dozen that i know of i just but... have xp waste oh Should there's XP waste? yeah no there, there's, I've only to there's one quite there, a so few now cool. but um yeah i don't know at the time there just wasn't that many and i so... think that probably uh going into quarantine stuff and other people probably also lost their jobs they're like well what do i do now you no, need yeah, a new absolutely. hobby <laughs> it's it's a nice little hobby uh did you consider starting another podcast instead of a different theme actually yes we did yeah. We were going to make a podcast about learning web development. Oh, yeah. I totally forgot about that. That was actually, <laughs> that was actually our first idea. That was our first idea. And I think we were going to name it something like, why am I crying? <laughs> yeah. And it was just going to be us uh, talking about what we were learning in web development because we were both learning web development at the time. I've since stopped <laughs> yeah. because I was crying a lot, you guys. <laughs> why am I crying? It was just constant. Yeah, that but, can, uh, that that question can be applied to any time you ask Michelle a difficult question. So. I'm such a bad learner. Like, I, I'm really bad at it. But, yeah, we we're going to do it and just talk about what we're up to and, like, like once we figured stuff out, basically, in web development. Robert's still kind of learning all that stuff. But now you've switched more into, like, learning Python. That was just, like, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Yeah, now I know quite a bit of JavaScript and all that stuff, so I moved into different things, but still kind of generally the same. Yeah, JavaScript was still annoying. It's still, why am I crying? Oh, okay. I think it's something like that that we're going to call it. No, it definitely was. But, yeah, that was our first idea before we actually thought about this podcast name. Mm -hmm. And then Boon Babe happened. And then we're like, video games are more fun. (laughs) Yeah. Would you consider starting another podcast in the future? Um, I yeah maybe yeah, I would it. but I already have two podcasts right now so it'd have to be, like really really like the idea yeah 
I get kind of stressed out already being in two with the stream. <laughs> I've thought about it in my head mostly because like I didn't even know you'd be interested. Well, because I mean this the name of this podcast is Boon Vape, so it'd be weird. I feel like if we did other stuff not RuneScape related. Mm -hmm. So that's what I've thought about, like is doing other like gaming podcasts or something like that. But it'd be kind of pointless because you don't really play any other games besides like RuneScape and Animal Crossing. Mm-hmm. So it'd be kind of just, yeah, just like <laughs> doing it by myself, more or less. I mean, I could still join you, but if anyone has any good podcast ideas, you know, let us know. It, I just have to really like it because I really love doing spooky shit and I really love doing boon babe, and I feel so stressed out sometimes doing those. So I'd have to really like it to want to do it. Yeah, <laughs> but I like that question a lot because it, it reminded me of like I didn't even I already forgot that we wanted to do that other podcast and stuff. Yeah. I totally forgot. But yeah, thank you for that, Matt. This next question is from Harger on Twitter. If there was a raid in a new location, where would you want to be? Personally, I would choose the Neris. Yeah, um, this was really easy for me. Um, oh? Yeah, I would choose somewhere underwater. Oh! <gasps> underwater uh, raid yeah so that'd be so cool that'd be pretty easy and also that'd be cool because you can put it in places where i feel like there just isn't that much content being mm -hmm. put because like there's underwater false island a, a, a million things going on in the desert currently there's yeah. new stuff going on in zaya sometimes and so i would just put it in either the fremnik area you can put Ooh, it Fremnik in would be interesting anywhere in um what's it called in what's like the main mistelin Mm -hmm. Like you can put it just in any of the lakes or something like that, or yeah, near Fossil Island. Well, that'd be cool, like underneath Taverly Lake. Yeah, like you can put it in a ton of places, and it would be really easy. And I feel like it'd be better because give I feel us a like, raid that's in a weirdly common area. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it's cool, like expanding the map, but also it just gets more annoying traveling there because it's just like if you don't have a teleport there, then it's probably gonna suck. So I'm so glad I got the teleport to get to Chambers. It was a pain, even having yeah. to run to the mountain guide. Yeah, exactly. Because like if you look at Chambers, it's on the edge of the map. If you look at Theater of Blood, it's on the edge of the map, and both are extremely annoying to get to unless you have the teleports for them. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it'd be cool to just have it Underwater in a more cool. common spot. Like, it could be at Backstory and Falls. Or... <gasps> wow, I like that. They could be like, oh, there's a secret area we didn't notice before. Uh, yeah, something like that. You have like to that. go discover it. Yeah, I don't, know. I don't know. Well, I love the idea of Underground. I also really like the Zanaris one because I was imagining it like, all the raids, you know, are all like dark and stuff. And that would just be like all like colorful and bright, but also like sinister at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking... Um, Per usual, like Letia or Priftinus. Okay. Because I love those areas, obviously. But also, like, the Gnome Stronghold. I want, like, just like a cave from, like, Lord of the Rings, basically, that you just go through and just. A cave from Lord of the What's Rings? What's that cave where the dragon is and Gandalf? That's not a dragon. Mm. What was it? It's a Balrog. I have not seen Lord of the Rings in a really long time. Yeah. I haven't read those books in 10 years either. But yeah, that's a, that's a giant dwarven cave. Yeah, so like a giant dwarven cave that, with raids in it. I think that might be the Mines of Moria. Maybe. He says this like he watches Lord of the Rings all the time. When's the last time you've been watching them? You just have good memory. Uh, I don't know. I have watched that movie a handful of times. Yeah, we watched it together. No, yeah, I mean, I've, I've just watched it like kind of a lot of times. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think something like that would be cool. Like a dwarven cave that you're just traveling through and you're meeting peril at every turn. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. I, I like I really like um, dwarven architecture and stuff like that, mm -hmm. so I think that'd be cool in general. Definitely, I also, like all these. <laughs> also, like I like dwarven stuff, but also I feel like they don't take advantage of that in this game, like because I feel like the dwarf stuff in this game is like really small scale and like not really, just like yeah, not really taking advantage of like it exists, mm -hmm. but like not really because like dwarves are known for having like massive, extremely ornate like creations. And they just don't really have that. I mean, they They're have more like simple designs in here. In here, they have like I mean, the statue and stuff like that, and Keldegrim. But Keldegrim itself is really small, and there's no like really cool architecture or anything like that. So yeah, that's kind of strange. I feel like there'd be. I feel like you could easily do a like a raid in Keldegrim or something like that, and like you incorporate some underwater there. Yeah, maybe you <laughs> find like an like the old like an old lost king's like castle or something like that, and like a, a 
enemy has taken it over or something. That'd be so dope. Yeah, I feel like that'd be really cool because then you could do like really cool looking architecture. Kind of like how like everything in Theater of Blood is like black and red. Mm -hmm. You can do like a like a darker theme with gold because <gasps> dwarves are obsessed with gold as well. Yeah. So, Wait, uh, I'd love that. Yeah, that could be cool <laughs> That'd be so sick. I want all of these things. And maybe in five years when we have the next raid. Yeah, maybe in 25 years. <laughs> Next question. We have a couple from St. Wraith. So first question is, 25 years after everyone stops playing, what will players remember about OSRS? And we'll never, no one's ever going to stop playing. So That, yeah, first of all. First <laughs> and foremost. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, no. Absolutely the main thing I'm going to remember about OSRS is the first thing I thought of right now because like, I feel like a lot of things you think about for games are very fleeting mm -hmm. unless you think about them for a long time. The first thing I'm gonna think about is the toxic toxic P carriers no! and bots. Really? Yeah. That's so negative. That's the first thing I thought of. Not even anything in the game really. I mean the bots I guess are. Well, besides that, probably like Tutorial Island and Tutorial Island music. Yeah. It's cute there. Yeah. That's like, depressing. I don't know. That's just the first thing I thought of. That's the first thing I always think of. The first thing I thought of was being in Lumbridge and uh killing cows in Lumbridge. And also woodcutting, which is so funny because I don't even woodcut, but I feel like woodcutting was like, you're a beginner, you're just starting this game. Why not go cut some wood? <laughs> That's funny. It's just a natural progression in my brain. Yeah. Years are so negative and I'm like, nostalgia. Yeah. like Cows and trees. I feel like if someone was like, yo, you remember RuneScape, I would have been like, oh, bro, there were so many bots in that game. Like, I feel like that would literally be my you're experience, my so response. Funny. Oh my God. <laughs> Yeah. That's just a little depressing. Uh, I mean, it's not like bad or anything. That's just what comes to mind when I think about it. Yeah. Our next question from Wraith is, if you could design a piece of official OSRS merch, what would it be? Piece of I... unofficial OSRS? Or uh, official. Official OSRS oh, merch. this is easy. I want a real fire cape. Not like real like lava. No, real. <laughs> But I want to have like lights and stuff. I think that'd be cool. Uh, yeah. I don't know if I mentioned it on here. I probably have Gluten Girl. Shout out Gluten Girl 84 on Twitch. Go follow her, everyone. She's making me, she's going to make me a new cosplay. Yeah. That's going to take like a really long time. But she was talking about like how she's going to make the fire cape and stuff. And I was like, whoa, this needs to be a thing. This would be so cool. Yeah. That would she's going to really have cool. like lights and stuff, hopefully. I think that'd be nice if they sold that. Yeah. I think they should just sell in general more like cosplay stuff. Mm -hmm. they're really missing out on that yeah i, I could definitely see that but yeah. also i mean all those people on etsy gotta make money so there's no neve cosplays on etsy if you search neve on etsy you're gonna see some not safe for work stuff that's weird yeah it's very weird nice. <laughs> um you? mine would probably be much more practical and uh i don't know if i'd ever buy this shirt but it'd probably be the closest thing to a shirt that i would buy from osrs and I'm really a big fan of like minimalist design mm -hmm. um, as far as clothing goes. So I'd probably do like a like a solid colored shirt, like a black shirt with, you know, how like some shirts have the pocket and there's like something sticking out of them. Oh, yeah. But it'd be a tail. And then when you look inside of the pocket, it's a trout. A trout? <laughs> yeah. I thought you were going to say like a baby chinchampa. No. I wasn't imagining like a fish tail. <laughs> yeah, so it'd be like a little fish tail sticking out and then a trout in there. We added a little trout emote to our page too yeah. for followers. So everyone uh, go enjoy that. <laughs> yeah, it's a cool trout. It's a cool trout. <laughs> but that's actually hilarious. You could probably design that yourself if you wanted no, to. Yeah, yeah, it'd be chill. Oh, nice. It'd be really easy to do. And also like, it'd be it'd be like, oh, what's in your pocket? Oh, it's just a little trout. Just a little trout. <laughs> Oh, wait, I'd wear that totally. Yeah. <laughs> Yours is way more minimalist than my fire cape answer. Oh, yeah, you can say that. <laughs> but yeah, that is it for QA this week. But what are you going to be working on for next week? Um, You know, just more Firewatch Sentinel. Living your life. Yeah. It's nice because I can also semi-AFK them while studying if it's like something that is like less demanding on my brain. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so it's nice I can get like both done at the same time. Whereas I can't do that really with Rune Dragons. So until I find like uh, on the weekend, I, I'll go back to Rune Dragons. Like when I have more time to just play instead of like doing other stuff at the same time. Yeah, Rune Dragons are not that AFK. Yeah, I mean, they, <laughs> they are, but. Not as much as Firewatch Sentinels. Yeah, I just don't want to die because it is 
it does cost like 600k to get my stuff back oh no yikes yeah so whenever you die at Firewatch sentinels if you have like a proper setup then it, it actually doesn't cost you anything it costs maybe oh, wow. less than 10k that's sick yeah and on my alt account it literally doesn't cost me anything because i just don't have any gear on that account <laughs> nice yeah so it's pretty cool whenever you die there it's not a big deal you just go get your stuff back and you teleport right back to where you were so yeah yeah but i'll probably just be doing that what about you i am gonna be trying to get the dark claw course i'm gonna be working on that also like any opportunity people want i'm gonna try and go do chambers more because i'm getting better at it every time and it's pretty fun and I'm enjoying it. And I'm also going to try it out this mini game more. I'd like to actually like know what I'm doing there. Yeah. Even if I don't want to stay there cuz I'm not really I think it makes me less intrigued in this mini game is that they don't have a mini game pet like Guardians of the Rift. It was a little bit like, "All right, I want this pet." Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it would have been nice if they added something like that. Like... I could see the max like later on. It'd be cool if they added like um like a chase item for this because, um yeah th- like you said there's just like not really anything for the mini game yeah there's not like a big rare item yeah like if you don't want the outfit then you're probably just gonna be like me and do this a couple times and that's it yeah but yeah I wanna I definitely do want to like try it. I want to at least know how to do it without like struggling you know that's that's gonna be my little goal hopefully next week I'll have the dark claw it's getting it's getting pretty crazy out here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, you get it sooner than later. Yeah, but we'll see. That's about it. I mean, it's kind of that's going to take up like hours and hours of my life. Yeah, but... it's going to take forever. But yeah, come and stop by the stream sometime. I stream five days a week. I take Thursdays and Saturdays off. But it's twitch.tv slash boonbape. Come read with me. Come do Slayer with me. That's not a thing. Come do Zolcano with me. I don't know. I've been yeah. I've been enjoying playing with other people lately. Yeah, and so, if yeah. you just want to like come hang out or you don't have other, to play games with me, <laughs> find other people to play games with, and feel free to join our Discord. Yeah, we also have a Twitter that's Boonbape LSRS, and our Instagram and YouTube are both just Boonbape. So follow us everywhere. Say hello. Let us know if you listen to the podcast. Anytime people say they listen to the podcast, it blows my mind. Yeah. Also, feel free to ask us questions on any of those platforms. Yeah, and we can give you a little shout out on here, like uh, Matt Harger and Wraith have gotten shout outs today. Also. Somebody came by the stream the other day and said they just finished Mage Arena 2 using my guide and how they were looking for the boss for like an hour and using my guide, they found it really quick and it was the best thing ever. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. (laughs) That's funny. (laughs) So if you enjoy anything, let us know because in my mind, I'm like, no one's ever seen any of my videos ever. (laughs) Yeah. But yeah. uh, yeah. (laughs) I think that's about it. Thanks everyone for listening and giving us your time this week. Yeah, thank you so much. Yep, thanks, and we'll see you all very soon. Very soon. Bye bye. -bye. Meatball.